What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Pokemon Sword Master Mode Galarian Forms only. Previously, we were back in Hammerlock. Um, this is the episode before that, we fought Opal. This episode, we're probably fighting Gordy, but previously we rolled the challenge as you can see on the wheel. Box everybody with the highest level. We had an option between three of the mods at the time, uh, being the Stunfisk, Weezing, or the Surfetch. We went with the Surfetch and basically had an episode where it was just Surfetch, you know, hacking and slashing his way through everybody in um, Hop, most everybody in Route 7, and of course, pretty much everybody here in Route 8. There's like one double battle over there to our over there I sometimes forget directions because you know my right is technically over there and left is over there but my camera's looking that right is over there doesn't matter there's a double battle over there and then I think there might be one trainer in route 9 that we have to fight before we get to the next town but this is what the team is looking like now remember we don't repeat challenges in back-to-back -back episodes unless a punishment tells us that's what we have to do so this video we should not get a challenge like this now is it possible that it says we get a challenge where it's like use only one type of pokemon absolutely that is something that can happen do i see that happening not really because the chances of it are super duper low but the reward from the previous episode for the challenge we did was another devil's advocate. So if we get something like that, I'm more than likely just gonna be like, nah, we're gonna use, we're just gonna use one of our devil's advocates. And I was saying at the end of the previous episode, I don't know what I'm gonna use it, it on if we do end up doing that. And I'm just gonna multitask or spin the wheel while we're talking about it. I don't necessarily wanna go candy jar every single time because then it makes the devil's advocate feel almost kind of cheap and like a cheat code. And especially in a Nuzlocke type like this, I would actually like to stack up the uh, Devil's Advocates um, perk to save for post-game. Because post-game Sword and Shield is where it's probably going to be the most difficult for us. Because again, our typing situation is not the greatest. Um, I've spoken about that a lot throughout the series, but like, it really, really isn't. But when we have situations like this, I know we're going into the gym in this episode. So having a no potions challenge, not gonna fly with us. So we will go ahead and use one of those devil advocates. So we're back to three um, for that, which is fine. I kind of saw it coming. I honestly, because I don't know what type of reward I want, I'm just gonna take Yoink, which Yoink is essentially a perk one of the few perks where you get a reward for it, but it is different from Candy Jar because Candy Jar, I choose the reward, whereas Yoink, I just spin the reward wheel and I get what I get. So what I'm saying is if I get, if I, you know, choose Yoink, which I do for this video, spin the wheel and I land on nothing, then I get nothing, so. That's just the gamble that I get to play. And speaking of gambling, we're gonna go ahead and fight this person over here, or this Dubo over here. Sorry, I don't know why I'm, I don't know why I'm going like this. Uh, I do remember this double battle though, because I'm pretty sure they have. Yep, I remember that. An extra zero. Pretty sure there's a Lucario here as well. So this actually. Ooh. Okay, I don't know if. This Excadrill got Sand Rush or Sand Force. Either way, I think what we do here, someone's clicking EQ or Ground Type Move into that slot. And I know that we have Levitate with our Galarian Weezen here. So, we swap into that. Heat Wave is a decent enough move to go for here. Goes for dig. So it still doesn't really say to me that it has Sand Rush. It just means that it's faster than me. So Sand Tomb on a surface. I wasn't swapping out. I should have just impression. Should have just first impression. But it's fine. 
Oh, and you know what? Let me let me try to multitask in this episode here. So I'm gonna pull up this tab real quick. Um, we're gonna go for I think I don't know if I can afford to uh, not heal my my boy. But you know what? We're gonna try it and see. We're gonna hope and pray. Excadrill does go for dig on the Galarian Weasel. That is fine. Um. Okay, let's go to this here. That does good damage. That was a crit, though. Crazy how I got a crit when I didn't, like, boost my stats at all. Heat Wave misses the hip out on, but does hit the Excadrill for a lot of damage. Goes for yawn. Okay. I'm not... I'm not bothered by that, though. Sword and... Shield clock. Time of day. For mag time, you can only see it in the wild area. So, does that. Before you beat the game, the day night cycle is fixed on. based on. in the. Can't talk. Before you beat the game, the day-night cycle is fixed based on the story and cities and routes. If the story dictates a town to be night, gotta read, gotta read this because this is for our Lanoon. Wild time, wild area time is the same with your switch clock. Six day cycle. Go to the wild area and meet the Pokemon evolve conditions. Okay, so then I just have to wait till eight o'clock, basically. Take my Lanoon into the wild area and and fight fight something. Fight something to level them up. So Weezing falls asleep, that's okay. Perserker comes out. Perserker is not faster than me, so. Um, I do expect this Excadrill to dig on my Surfetch, so what we're going to do is we're going to heal. Because if for whatever reason this Perserker does outspeed me, I'm not trying to get doubled up on and die instantly. We're not, we're not having that happen. Not having that happen. Um, and then there was something else I was just going to check. I can't remember what it is now. I can't remember what it is, but... Oh, um, so we know about that. Quick Claw location. Quick Claw Pokemon. So where do we get one of those? One way to is repeatedly visiting the bargain store. That's it? Following Pokemon. Oh, you can take it by using Trick or Thief. Okay. Alright, so Excadrill is back above the ground, which is about going for Dig again, which is annoying. I think what I do here, I might just Solar Stance. Now this is gonna be the one time he doesn't go for Dig, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna attack him. I know that I know the AI would be like that sometimes, so that's what we're gonna do. Um, so let's see. Quick claw. Maybe by using the mana. Hold on. Thief, yes, it is the bargain of the day. 100%. Yes, it is. Doesn't. Is it for. Is it on Sneasel? No, surely not. Surely not. Um, what was the other one? Black Sledge. Black Sledge. Because I would like to have that on the Weezing rather than the Rocky Helmet. You pick up a Black Sludge in the south of Winden along the narrow part. Okay, so it's in Winden. We know this. Acknowledge it. We're good. Um, make sure we're paying attention to what's going on on our screen, though. Because we have a Leftovers, we have that on Stunfest, but Black Sludge is only going to be good for Poison types. Which we only have the one with Weezing. So, 
yeah so that's that's the, that's what we're doing here. Right, so i think i think we can all agree we've probably seen enough of the surfetch um you could probably tell them hey go take 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 a seat in the back we don't need you to carry us more um because i'm pretty sure now with the rare candies and everything you're probably high enough level to fight the next next gym leader um and uh kick his ass especially because it's what's his name miles no myers i don't remember the name i think it begins with m though it's marnie's brother um but who do we lead with i kind of want to lead with Louisa. am i crazy am i crazy for thinking that should we leave with Weezing? Weezing? La, 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 la. Uh, yes, because we don't have any sort of awakening. So you know what? Let's just leave the surface for the rest of this uh, little area. Because literally this section of Route 9 is going to take us like three seconds to get through. Or Route 8, sorry. Because we got like one battle. Snob. Snobs everywhere. Vanillish. Which, by the way, I think Vanillish is underrated. Or, I shouldn't say it. Well, maybe, maybe I should say it's underrated. I think people hate on it because of its design. But, and this is something that I've thought about doing. It's like doing videos like talking about like, oh, what Pokemon design? Blah, 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 blah. I've thought about it, and this is kind of me just spitballing right now because nothing is technically, like it's in the works, but it's not like, nothing is official at this, this moment in time. All right, so we got brought out, which yes, he's a fire type, but I'm honestly not afraid of Arcanine, because I don't see this thing having a lot. And he decided to go for Roar again. That is the only chance that I was outspeeding him. So, great. Great job. Great job. Great play. Cleopatra trying to learn to slam. We don't need to slam. Um, Bolt on. We stay in. Even if this thing has fire fang, I'm not I'm not worried about it. I mean it could flinch me. I missed. Are you serious? I have like a 5% chance of missing that move, and I really just missed it. That's that's literally the most annoying thing to me. Is 5% chance to miss moves. Like it's literally the worst. Especially when you go for it, like, not that many times, and then you miss. Like, what was it? I was playing through Crystal, um, because, again, like, another another video idea that I have. And, um, I have Zap Cannon on a Magneton. And I, I'm saying this as of right now. I'm not done with playing Crystal just yet. So there's like one more thing I need to do in it before I'm like done done. But I've went for Zapkin and maybe like three or four times. I've landed it every single time. And I know what you might be thinking, well you you've used you use lock on Zapkin. Nope. Just have landed it every single time. Whenever I needed to, because I know when I fought Misty. And she brought in the Labras, I went for Zap Cannon and killed that thing on one hit. And then there was something else. I was attacking, like, I need to go for Zap Cannon instead of Thundershock. Because unless I teach Magneton, Thunderbolt, or Thunder, wherever those are located in Crystal, I don't learn a better electric type move except Thundershock. So. Yeah, like, I, that's what I'm saying, though. 50% accuracy, that's that can. Unless it's changed in Gen 2. Which I am not as familiar with Generation 2, so there could be a chance that Zapkin's accuracy is buffed. 
and then it was nerfed even lower. But typically, Zap Cannon is, you know, 50% accuracy. So it's a coin flip every single time that you go for it. So the fact that I am... Uh, went for it three times and landed it every single time. So do we go, do we go into the restaurant now or do we go in after? Because if we go in after, then we're chilling, then we're fine. We're schmoovin', we're great. Um, let's leave, let's leave with you. Because like I said, Surfetched and Stunfisk were gonna be our monsters for this anyways, so. I don't particularly mind. Because I don't, I really, really, really don't need Surfetch to be taking all the shine. I really don't. Oh, there we go. We love it. We love it. We've been recording for, what? We did a 30, like seven minute video previously. So a little over an hour. My capture card audio just goes to crap for a quick moment. crazy that you lost and you had Trevenant. If we're going based on the battle that we had against him in the previous episode. The man had a Trevenant and he had a uh, Inteleon. What else did he have? He had Bolton, Heatmore, and Snorlax. So, realistically, he should not have lost when he had Inteleon and Trevenant. But, to counteract that, his ace is a Colossal, which I think Surfetch is going to be the thing that has to take on that Colossal. Like, there's really no, uh, no other, no other way of going about it. I like how we're just holding it like this. We're just kind of like... The closer you are to the hold, the stronger the vibration. Now, I don't know if that is the case with my controller or not. I don't remember. It is not. We have to go based off of what we see here. Okay, so we can't go that way. So we have to go this way, we go this way. I just go straight forward onto this platform. Okay. And then I think we have to go to the left and up. So, I remember this puzzle somewhat. Because I'm pretty sure they have the same puzzle in this game. Uh, like, so there's version exclusive gym leaders like we were talking about. So, Bia is exclusive in this game. Like, Gordy, but we had Alistair and... Melanie, who are exclusive to Shield. And Bia and Alistair share the same puzzle, and Gordy and Melanie share the same puzzle. So, it's really just the typing of the gym leaders that's different. Otherwise, it's the same puzzle. I remember it being that way in this. Because I never actually covered Shield. I've never covered uh, Pokemon Shield on the channel, have I? Because it's been my my goaded uh, goaded copy. All right, so we're not gonna go that way. We're gonna go this way. Fall into that pitfall, but it's fine because we're literally right here, so it doesn't matter. Like, I can imagine if you're playing on an emulator, this is probably the worst uh, gym challenge to go for or go through because you have to, you have to look at everything. Okay, so it wouldn't be up the middle. It'd be to the left. No. 
now would be to the right. Okay, it's very similar as to before. Not that way. Let's go this way. But you can't go that way. Okay. Makes no sense, but sure. So it, then it's it is to the left. Okay. I'm getting signals from each fucking direction. Am I not? Okay. We made it to this one. So... The nice thing is that they make each one of these a checkpoint when you step on them. That's good. Crustle. Oh, we have, we're gonna have plenty of time to be in this gym leader. Gym leader battle. That, yeah, that was horribly phrased. It was horribly phrased. All right, X scissor, that shouldn't do anything to me. Go for the metal claw. Can I get an attack boost? No. No, I'm not gonna be greedy. I would rather land all my metal claws than get an attack boost. Going for the hazards. I'm not switching out at any point. So there's that. And we're back to full HP. I'm gonna go for a sucker punch. Expecting an attack here. I thought she had another Mon. I guess I just can't count. Which isn't... You know, crazy. <laughs> Not crazy to think about. I just can't imagine how... how we're gonna be handling a gym battle like Ryan. I feel like his gym battle is gonna be stupid. We gotta go this way and around. And we're not gonna be able to get that lucky. Never mind. Surely we don't go all the way. Surely we don't go all the way. Okay, yeah, I was gonna say, surely we don't go all the way around. Because they wanna, they wanna lead us to this. Okay, that, that no, that's just misleading as hell. Why is there a signal there indicating that I can't go that way? All right, Carcol. Right, Colossal. Colossal is gonna be scary, but this is probably the one time where us having you no know, water type is probably gonna be better for us because it does get access to Steam Engine, which. If hit by a water type move and it would were to live, would boost its speed by plus three, I think. And normally, Colossal is very, very slow. Very, very slow. But that obviously changes if his speed is what, 2.5 times? So something we do need to keep a pretty sharp eye on. But luckily, the only fire type move we have is Heat Wave. And we wouldn't go for a fire type move against someone that is quad resistant to fire. Like, it may be stupid, but I'm not that stupid. But yeah, we have plenty of time. So, oh no! I was gonna say, that was. I'm pretty sure that might be the last one, but no, there's another one. I remember this one being even worse because there's fog, so. I already can't figure out where I'm going unless I look at the indicator. But luckily, I think this one's like a double platform, which is big. Triple platform, actually. 
That's actually that's actually good for us. Alright, Sudowoodo. Not scared of you at all, buddy. I no reason to be. Go for a mud shot. That's gonna do a lot. A lot, a lot. Wood hammer, that's not gonna do too much. That's about what? 25% maybe? Actually no. That's about like 20. But it's fine because we outspeed. And we miss 5% chance to miss moves. How many mud shots have we gone for in this? Because we haven't healed up our PP or anything. We've missed two now. So let's just take a look and see. We went for five. Okay, so by that logic, this move would have 60 accuracy. You would think. You would think that. gonna make a big song and dance about it. And now if this was like if you guys remember back to our Bolt White randomizer master mode, we had a superior who had power whip and he for pretty much the entire time that we had it with power whip never missed it. And then there was one time first time it missed and I was like oh okay you know what it's 70 accuracy like you'd expect it to miss by now so there's that platform which kind of sucks okay so where was that one at still can't see it Cool. Um, then it proceeded, because it was 70 base accuracy with Power Whip, then it proceeded to miss five or six. No, I'm pretty sure it was six out of seven Power Whips, with five of those being in a row against a Mon that had no evasion boost, and I had no accuracy drops. And it was there where my trust issues flared up even more than before. Okay, so I see here. Something tells me I gotta go this way, right? Because it wasn't going to let us just walk straight there. No, it wasn't going to let us do that at all. Yeah, it wasn't going to let us walk straight there. Kind of coined to figure that. And then remember, when we get into gym battles or anything like that, and the timer goes off, like we still play as if the challenge is in effect. Obviously, we have a yoink, so the challenge is that there is no challenge. But the point is that until we're out of an area where there is no necessary dialogue or anything like that, we play with the rules that are implemented. Um, okay, so let's see. 44, 48. We should be, we should be fine. We should be absolutely fine. Um, just, just run in there. Screw it. Um, the only thing I can think of that he would have is probably, outside of Colossal, he probably has Gigalith. He would probably have... What's his name? He's the big, he's the big stone Pokemon that's in this game. Stonejourner. I think he'll have those three. And I don't know what else he would have. Barical. Now, could we see a Shell Smash coming? Possibly. But the nice thing about this is that I do have Mud Shot. He goes for Razor Shot. Okay. So he's going to do a 
lot of damage to us. We go for Mud Shot. That's going to do nothing, really. Oh, wow. Okay. I don't think he's got Pursuit or anything. Honestly, don't see a reason why we switch out here. You just gotta be very, very careful. I can't think of a rock type that was is gonna outspeed. I can't think of a rock type that's gonna be fast enough. Okay, rock razor shell is gonna do Okay, hold on. Let's do a little bit of math here. Let's do a little bit of math here. So that crit did what? Uh, Seventy-eight points of damage, which means that would have initially done about fifty. It would have done fifty something. So I could just first impression this thing and maybe kill it. Because first impression is just basic 90. Whereas Brick Break, 75. Stab makes it go to like 100 and... Seven or something like that, 108. But it's super effective. So this is, this is the best thing to go for. I don't see how this thing outspeeds me. Okay. Now the thing is, do I Dynamax before his Colossal comes out to get the attack boost? Is that what I do? I don't know if the answer to that question is yes. Because I do get a, I get an HP buff, right? This goes to what? Base 90, which is strong, which is stronger than Brick Break. So there's no reason for me not to do this. It is risky, but because I get attack boost by it, or because of it, this just seems like the smartest thing to do. We go early, because even if he does, you know, Dynamax or whatever, and get his HP buff from it, He's not gonna... I don't think he's gonna take... He's not gonna play... He's not gonna take a plus two maximum, basically, is what I'm trying to get at. Now, thing is, might actually be plus three max knuckle, because if he does bring up the Gigalith... That's a chuckle. Never mind. I thought he had Giga Lift. Okay. So we're still plus one though, which is good. Shuckle has no HP. I don't know if this is gonna one shot actually. Ooh, it was close. But you know what? That's fine. That's absolutely fine. Ooh, the lowering of the speed. That is crucial. I don't know if we outspeed. I don't know if we outspeed Colossal. Now, my guess is that we still do, because Colossal is very slow. But I also don't know. I really am trying my best not to take an un an unnecessary risk. Really trying not to do that. So we do lose our Dynamax this turn. He gets his, but at plus three, we shouldn't, we should be able to one shot a Colossal. We should be able to one shot a Colossal.
There we go. Oh, the crit. I'm gonna go on on a limb and say that the crit doesn't matter. He does have a lot of defense. So it's hard to say. Do you get a level 42 on the low noon? Cleopatra's up to 35. Woo! Just like that, sixth gym badge of gods. With some relative ease, I would say. I was a little bit nervous about that start and the fact that we got critted by the Varicle. But I think us Dynamaxing early was very crucial. And the fact that we had the episode that we did before this, like, Surfetch. But it's... I think even if we take away the three rare candies we gave them, we we're probably going to be all right. Rock Tomb as a TM, that's not bad. It's really not. Um, Rock Tomb actually was horrible when it first came out. But in this game, uh, well, I should say post-Generation 6 is actually pretty decent. Pretty decent move. But um, I actually think there's a cutscene outside. So I'm just going to do this now because I would like to explore a fair bit of Churchester in between this episode and the next. Because if we keep running into these uh, situations where we have two video recording sessions, I think we need to have moments where we just sit down and do a little bit of exploring. So I remember the game a little bit. Because I, I'm going to have to record for this, but like, I guess because the month of June is already going to be like, there's so much going on. It's not like there's like, oh my God, two videos. And then it's like, oh my God, I got to record again in two days because I'm just got a lot of videos going on. So, but I do, I do think if I can finish this series in a timely manner, then it will look real nice. But that's besides the point. We did have the yoink as our perk for this video, so uh, let's go to our reward wheel and let's see what we get for this video. Okay, so we said for free encounters that we aren't gonna count them, specifically because we basically got the ability to use all of our Galarian forms within the first gym. <laughs> all like catching the encounters and everything, like with statics and everything like that. Now, if we are doing, that also isn't gonna count. Um, now, if we were doing the, and this is another one of my ideas, I'll take that, I'll take that. Um, I don't even know what episode number this is. So I think we fought Opal, it was 15. This previous episode would have been 16. I think this is 17. So episode 18, we are gonna have it to where deaths don't count for the entire 30 minutes, which is actually not terrible in the grand scheme of things. I wish this would be something that I could just like throw as on the, on the reward as like something I can use whenever I want, but I would have to word that one differently. So deaths don't count for the next 30 minutes would mean that it's gonna be basically the duration of the next challenge, so. Episode 18 tomorrow, uh, this is tomorrow's episode. The next video you see of the series is going to be one where deaths don't count. But if you guys did enjoy this episode, make sure you hit that like button down below because it'd be greatly appreciated. Let me know what you think of the series so far. Um, when I look at the analytics for a series like this, um, not going and doing the intro moments, not doing an intro and outro, just kind of keeping it a vanilla series. It's doing surprisingly well, and I'm very, very happy about that. And I hope you guys are enjoying it. Um, maybe for the challenge aspect of the fact that we're, oh, we're doing something a little bit different. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just doing better. I don't, I don't know. What I'm saying is it seems like you guys are enjoying it. So I would like to hear that feedback down in the comments down below. Either way, um, check out the description for Twitter, Twitter. Not Twitter, X, uh, TikTok, and the community Discord. Check those out if you are interested. 
Um, check out the Minecraft Dungeons Let's Play that we have going on with me, Mr. Brownie, and Dante as well. And we will see you guys next time. Peace out.